By the time the Rakatan Infinite Empire spread by harnessing the dark side of the Force to create Force Storms triggering wormholes and to telekinetically control them into stability, and thus to transport their space vessels to targeted sites such as enemy planets, the Gri and the Qua were mainly already in the decline of their combined civilization. But before the Rakata invaded the planets Gri and Dathomir, and possibly as early as the spontaneously simultaneous discovery of the gravitic polarization beam's technology's use in creating wormholes by the earliest Gri and Qua themselves, there was another, more distant, space-faring species that lived across the span of the galaxy from both the Gri and Qua, and unlike the Gri and Qua, managed to survive on their home world of Colomus at least until the time of the New Order Galactic Empire. The Colomai were originally evolved from herbivorous reptiles in the low gravity marshes on Colomai in the core worlds. Rapidly evolving sentience, and eventually also interstellar spacecraft, the Colomai explored the various other core worlds in their sector of the galaxy, including at least Coruscant and Duro. However, their expansionist phase was rapidly withdrawn backward to their home world, possibly following the discovery of Centerpoint Station above Corellia. The official choice of the Colomai democracy at that time was not to interfere with the development of the species they encountered on their neighboring planets, whom they found to still be primitive and barbaric in comparison to the more advanced spacefaring technologies of the Colomai themselves. Although the Colomai may have developed the use of interstellar travel and spacecrafts independently, yet again at the same time as this same technology was being developed by the Rakata. However, because of their oath of non-interference, the Colomai were largely left alone by the Rakata invaders. They continued to flourish and develop their own forms of technology, such as the Colomai Mental Hoverpod, a device controlled by mental projection from their 100-lobed four cerebrums to telekinetically transport their atrophied torsos and vestigial limbs, and they eventually were one of the earliest supporters of the Imperial New Order, who likewise claimed to have been the first to discover Colomus. The commemorative Bortib Belagoth Early Parlemian Trade Route Hyperspace Beacon, commissioned around 25,100 BBY, displayed the faces of a Colomai beside those of a mythical Kako demon and a Molotar monster from Alderaan. The Rakata Empire had established a network of such hyperspace beacons throughout the Tion Cluster around that time, and these were used originally to help guide the Rakata's slave ships. The Tionese eventually reverse-engineered a form of hyperspace travel technology from these Rakatan beacons, contemporary to the earliest known period of development by the Duros and Corellians of the first hyperspace cannon propulsion systems for achieving interstellar travel between the core worlds. These beacons were used more or less continuously until the New Order era. However, around the time of the Mandalorian Wars, their usefulness had been superseded by the advancing technology of hyperspace faring vessels and Nava computers. Following the plague affecting only the Rakatan species, which destroyed their infinite empire around 25,200 BBY. The Duros were the first to reverse engineer the Rakatan dark side powered hyperdrive systems into a technological application capable of physical engineering. Their hyperdrive system, now called the Hyperdrive Cannon Engine, was the first of its kind, although identical technology also originated relatively independently and almost simultaneously on Corellia. 
While the Duros and Corellians had been focusing on developing the hyperspace cannon drive, the humans of Coruscant had also developed interstellar sleeper ships for long-duration space voyages. The hyperspace cannon propulsion system allowed a spacer to travel through hyperspace faster than light speed for a limited duration in a perfectly straight line. Its initial faults were in needing a return cannon to get back from even a short trip and in then yet lacking technology to program flight paths through hyperspace, which could still result in a collision with the mass shadow of a real space object's gravity well. For these reasons, the Gossam and the Deveronians sought to develop a safer, more stable ride during hyperspace exploration and combined the concepts at work in both the early hyperspace cannon spaceship engines and the late Rakatan and early Tianese anchored hyperspace beacons. Their invention was called the Tumble Hyperdrive and combined the earliest forms of astrogation navicomputers with hyperspace cannon propulsion and drag systems, resulting in short length, unpredictable jumps through distance and duration, arriving at unpredictable locations in space at odd times. Gradually, technologies developed on various independent worlds formerly ruled by the Rakatan spacers of the Infinite Empire that could now reconnect using the human core world sleeper ships, the Corellian or Duros built hyperspace cannons, the Teon Cluster hyperspace beacons, and the Co Gossam Deveronian tumble drive toward a unification point where all the necessary elements congealed at the right time to form the model that remains to this day the galactic standard for the principles of hyperdrive engineering. The original tests of the hyperdrive engine may have occurred based on or near the planet Hapis in the cluster which bears this planet's name. Hapis was uninhabited by sentience until soon before 4000 BBY when it was originally colonized by the Laurel Raiders who made their pirate base there and eventually gave rise to the subspecies of Hapan humans who would form the Hapan Consortium around 3000 BBY. The reason for this speculation was the development on Hapis by the Consortium of the Froned class hyperdrive a more powerful and advanced form of hyperdrive engine, although one developed in isolated use outside the scope of the Galactic Republic. Finally, around 25,053 BBY, the hyperdrive engine model in use ever since was first tested for performance. Almost exactly 75,000 years following the original serendipitous development simultaneously by the independent GRI enclave and QUA holdings of hypergate technology. Almost 5,000 years following the Rakata Infinite Empire's peak expansion period using dark side powered hyperdrives. Barely 150 years following the collapse of that empire and the liberation of its interplanetary slave species to begin experimenting with hyperdrive engines themselves. The galactic constitution was written and the newly invented and reliable hyperdrive engine became the preferred form of motor in almost every kind of spaceship.